What's up, YouTube? I'm Guy. Today on the channel, we are going to be talking about two different topics that are very closely related. Number one, I'm going to review a watch that was sent to me. Number two, I want to discuss micro brands. First of all, the watch. Well, why is it related to the topic at hand? Obviously, because it's from a micro brand. What we're going to be looking at is the Spinnaker Bradner. Number two, the topic of micro brands in general was brought up to me by a viewer not too long ago. A viewer had loaned me a couple of watches and they had asked me what did I think of micro brands in general? Did I think they were worth the money? Should people be investing their time, their effort, their energy, and of course the resources into micro brand watches? Well, it was convenient that right around the same time I was having that conversation, Spinnaker reached out to me and asked if I'd like to review this Bradner watch. So I thought I could tie these subjects all together into one video. That's what we're gonna do here today. All right, guys, here we have it, the Spinnaker Bradner SP5057-05. This is, again, the 05, and that is one of the dial color variations. There's a zero, one, two, three, four, the five, of course, here. Maybe there's a six, and also a designation of which, which kind of uh, strap it comes on. Now, first thing I want to cover before we get into the specs, the details, the features, all of that stuff is this is a compressor style watch. If you don't know what a compressor watch is, don't feel bad. I didn't know what it was before we got this watch in for review either. I'll give you a very rudimentary basic explanation. Compressor watches are dive watches that use the water pressure around them to make them more and more water resistant. Basically, you have the water pressure pushing down on the case and squeezing it together, and that pressure makes the seals watertight. This watch is a quote-unquote compressor style watch. I kept seeing that word style pop up in the literature that Spinnaker sent over to me. And I sent them an email and I said, what do you mean by compressor style? Is this an actual compressor watch or not? Well, they confirmed my suspicions. No, it's not an actual compressor watch. It's just a style or an aesthetic. It's like the compressor watches from years gone by. But in terms of its water resistance rating and functionality, it works like every other water resistant watch. It has rubber seals inside and does not rely on water pressure crushing down on the case to make it more and more water resistant. Keep in mind though, I think this is a good thing. Compressor watches have a known flaw in that when you're swimming at the surface of the water, when you don't have depth and pressure pushing down on the case of the watch, they can leak. They need to be deep underwater for their water resistance ratings to be most effective. So, if you're just gonna do light swimming, snorkeling, surface activities, you're better off not having an actual compressor watch in terms of functionality. I'm pleased that this looks like a compressor watch, which is a very cool aesthetic, but does not work like one. Because for the majority of us that are not professional divers, taking this watch 30, 40, 50, downwards of 100 or even 150 meters underwater, it's better that it isn't. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about the other features, functionality, specs, everything else about this watch. First things first, the price, $285. I think that the price on this watch is fantastic specifically or especially, I guess I should say, because there's a discount available of 20% on top of that. That brings this watch down to about 230 bucks or right in that kind of entry-level Seiko dive watch price range. And I think you're getting very much the same, if not better quality out of this watch that you would be getting out of those plus or minus $200 Seiko dive watches. Now, to get that 20% discount, you have to use a discount code, and I didn't go through the hassle <laughs> of setting it up, but if you're familiar with Watch Geek's YouTube channel, and if you're, well, first of all, if you're not, go subscribe to Watch Geek, because he's awesome, but he reviewed this watch a while ago, and he did go through the hassle of setting up the discount code. It's Watch Geek 20, W-A-T-C-H-G-E-E-K. 20. If you use his discount code, you'll get 20% off. I don't know if he gets a kickback or not. Maybe he does. Um, and, and that's fine if he does. He deserves it. His channel is great. He does a lot of good work. So if you want to buy one of these watches, $285 retail or use Watch Geek 20, get that 20% discount. Help support Watch Geek. He's got a great channel. Again, go check him out. I think that the price is 
outstanding on this watch. I'm very pleased with the value for money. Now, what about the dimensions? 42 millimeters in case diameter. Not bad. I tend to like a little bit smaller watches generally, but on dive watches and on chronographs, as I've said many times in the past, I can take a watch that's a little bit bigger. 42 millimeters, not including the crowns, is perfectly acceptable. 20, mil 20 millimeter lug width, that is also outstanding. I prefer 20 millimeter lugs to 22 by a long shot. I think it fits my wrist better. Most of you guys may or may not agree with me on that, but I'm pleased with the overall diameter and the lug width on this watch. The thickness though, it is a little bit chunky, 14 millimeters in thickness. And it, not that it is actually super thick. I mean, a lot of dive watches are around 13. It looks thick though. It, it's, it is just, yeah, kind of like a chunky watch basically. Also lug to lug from one tip of the case to the other. 49 and one half millimeters, a little bit longer that I than I prefer. The moral of the story is that with the way that this watch presents and coupled with some of those dimensions, it's a little bit big. If you prefer a smaller watch like me, that might be a problem. I'll give you a wrist shot of how it looks on my six and three quarter inch wrist here in the future. Uh, it's wearable for sure, but suffice to say, just a hair larger than I would prefer. All right, the rest of the specifications on this watch. Stainless steel case, of course, as you can see. Uh, 316L, obviously. It comes on a leather strap. They call it a waterproof or water-resistant leather strap. I didn't test that. In my experience, most leather does not hold up well to water, but they are claiming that it is a at least water resistant leather strap. So if you have any experience with this watch and this strap in the water, maybe let us know down in the comments. Other people might be interested to know how it does hold up. I think one of the shortcomings of this watch is that there's not a rubber strap or bracelet option that I'm aware of. For sure there's not a bracelet option. I don't think there's a rubber strap option either. And that might be one of my shortcomings. Uh, moving along though, sapphire crystal, which is nice. If we look at it in profile, a little bit of kind of a, a dome, a bevel edge anyway. It's like flat across the top, but it does kind of curve up from the edge. It is a nice looking sapphire crystal. We do, of course, also have an exhibition case back. And uh, inside there is a Seiko NH35 movement. We'll talk about that more in a few moments. Bidirectional internal bezel controlled by this crown up at the top. We are going to talk about that significantly here in a few minutes. 150 meters of water resistance, which is good, in my opinion, more than enough, but some people might complain it should be at least 200. I don't care, 150 is fine in my opinion. Screw down crown, this is of course the crown to move the bezel. The lower right hand side crown here is for hand winding the movement for setting the time and date. Finally, the dial is covered and the bezel graduations as well with uh, a nice application of Superluminova. Seiko's NH35, basically the 4R35 movement is the date only version of the 4R36, which is day date. 24 joules, 41 hours of power reserve, a beat rate of 21,600 vibrations per hour. Overall, for a watch at this price point, I think the case is very nicely done. The majority of the case is a kind of satin brushed finish. There is a little hint of polish around the edge of the bezel there. You can kind of see, and it's like this metal outer bezel ring that we're talking about. The brushing itself, sort of a coarse grain vertical brushed pattern. Not crazy, you know, high quality luxury style brushing, but at a sub $300 price point, the finishing is quite adequate. The overall shape and style of the case I think is very nice. Sh very significant downward sloping lugs. Yes, I had mentioned this case is a little bit on the thick side, but the overall uh, you know, look, the feel, the style of it works quite well for me. I do like it. The bezel, the internal bezel, is bi-directional and it is controlled by this external crown. There's no um, detents or clicking like you find in an external bezel. It's just a nice smooth spinning bi-directional bezel. It works very well. It works like you would expect any, you know, elapsed time bezel to work. You line up the zero marker with the minute hand as time elapses. You can see five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, as it expires. Very simple to work. Now the other crown, it is a screw down crown. 
Hand winding the movement is uh, one of the features of the NH35. Pull the crown out to the first position in order to quick set the date, sixth, the seventh, the eighth, and so on. Pull it out to the second position to hack the movement, and then you can set the time as necessary. While the functionality of the bezel vis-a-vis -vis this crown is perfectly fine, it's very easy to use the bezel to set it. I don't feel like it's too loose. It's not like you could easily bump it to knock it out of alignment. That all works well. There is a problem that I do have with the bezel, though. It's not very legible. Yeah, the graduations, the 5, the 10, the 15, the 20, all of those markers are very legible, but all of the individual graduations... I mean, you almost can't even see them. I'm not sure if it's even coming through on camera. There's little pips in between the 5 and the 10 mark, and they are not highlighted or colored in at all. It is very hard to see them. The dial is very nice, very beautiful, kind of gradient sunburst blue dial, applied markers, again, filled with super luminova, very amply. The loom on the handset and on all of the markers on the dial and the bezel, it's all done very well. It's very bright. It's long-lasting. Thumbs up there. Now we, of course, have the Spinnaker branding up at the 12 side, automatic, and then below that, if we can get in there a little bit closer, 500 feet, 150 meter designation, and our date complication over at the 3 o'clock position uh, is outlined with uh, you know, a nice little off-white, creamy, colored outline frame border, if you will, black date wheel, uh, white contrasting text. That all works good, perfectly legible. I do like the presentation, I do like the style of this watch, I just wish those two little aspects about the unidirectional bezel legibility and the chapter ring legibility were a little bit better. The strap on this watch is nice, it's got a signed spinnaker tang buckle, one keeper sewn in, one free floating keeper, um, kind of a vintage looking strap style to, you know, to match the uh, compressor style aesthetic. Uh, overall, very nicely done. Little stitching here around the end for uh, a highlight or, you know, whatever, decoration, I guess. Uh, the underside is lined. It's also nicely done. The lining is comfortable. I will throw it on the wrist and I will show you what this watch looks like on a six and three quarter inch wrist. All right, guys, there's the Spinnaker Bradner on my six and three quarter inch wrist. One thing I need to point out about the strap, I had mentioned it's a nice strap. It's comfortable, supple, nice feeling leather, but it is a thick strap. Let me try and get a good angle there. The material is thick. If you don't like a thick, bulky strap, that might be something you're going to want to change out. Overall, it's not terrible, uh, but I prefer a lower profile strap generally. So yeah, I may throw a different strap on there. 20 millimeters, you can get anything you want on there, no problems. NATO strap would probably be an excellent option. Other than the strap being a little bit thick, how do we like the watch? Well, 42 millimeters in diameter, awesome. No problems with that, 20 millimeter lug width, I love that. 49.5 millimeter from lug to lug might be beginning to challenge the overall limits of my wrist. Let me zoom in here a little bit closer for a better look. So as you can see, generally speaking, my wrist prefers a 48 millimeter lug to lug maximum. This one being 1.5 millimeters bigger than that. Yeah, I could do it. I could pull it off. It's not the end of the world for me, but it makes me wish my wrist was maybe seven inches or seven and a quarter. Um, yeah, if you have a smaller wrist than me, you may like it even less. But if you're the type of person that likes a little bit of a chunky watch, you know, it's not going to be that big of a problem. Probably work for you. Speaking of chunky, what about that 14 millimeter height? Yeah, it's tall. It stands off the wrist. You're not going to be wearing this under a dress shirt, but, you know, it's not ridiculous. I've seen um, Valjoux 7750 chronographs, like uh, I reviewed a Fortis in the past, but that was thicker than this for sure. So there are a lot thicker watches out there on the market. This is certainly doable at 14 millimeters. But yeah, there it is. I do like it. I think the style is very nice. A couple of minor legibility problems. You know, it is what it is. What are you going to do? Uh, overall, though, I think it's a good value. And I'm going to say, yeah, check it out if you're interested. All right, guys. Well, that was the Spinnaker Bradner reference SP5057. I hope you enjoyed checking that watch out with me. And a very big thank you to the folks over at Spinnaker for sending this watch in for review. I really do appreciate it. Now that leads us to the second part of this discussion. What do I think about micro brands in general? 
So before we start with the microbrand discussion, number one, I have to lay out some ground rules. What we're talking about here primarily are going to be microbrand watches in the sub $500 price point because the viewer that asked me this question framed it in that way. What do I think about the more affordable microbrand watches? Now I have reviewed more expensive microbrand watches. Jeannault being one example, the Super Submariner Homage watch, I absolutely loved that. I reviewed the Manta Triumph, that was an outstanding watch, but those are $1,000 to $2,000 price range watches, and that's a completely separate discussion. When we're talking about micro-brand watches like this Spinnaker Bradner that we reviewed today in the sub $500 price point, that's when it starts to get really interesting. So the first thing I want to note about micro-brand watches, particularly entry-level and affordable micro-brand watches, is that I have never run into one that I have outright hated. I have never been completely disappointed by any of the micro-brand watches that I've encountered, so that's a really good thing. I think that micro-brands are building very good, high-value watches that are very competitive with a certain brand. Seiko, of course, that's who I'm talking about, and I have not been shy about saying this. I am not pleased with the way that Seiko has been running their business lately. They have been doing, frankly, what I would consider to be a little bit shady of a practice. Not really. They're not doing anything illegal. They're entitled to want to make more money, but that's what they're doing. A lot of cash grabbing. They're discontinuing a lot of fan favorite watches. They're replacing them with more expensive models. They're taking movements that were in $300 watches and putting them into $600 and $700 and $800 watches. Overall, I just don't really like what Seiko's been doing. These micro-brand watches coming in at the two, three, four, five hundred dollar price points compete very well with those high-value watches that we used to love that Seiko is no longer making. That's one reason why I really like these affordable entry-level micro-brand watches and why I would recommend them. Another thing that I really like about these micro-brand watches they have the liberty to be a little bit more adventurous than your major manufacturers, like Seiko, for example. The companies like Spinnaker, the Bradner that we had here today, another model that comes to mind, or another brand, rather, uh, Dan Henry, they can be a little bit more adventurous with their watch designs. When you go to Seiko and you want to buy a watch, I mean, it's all really very similar. They don't have the latitude to break out of their mold. They have to toe the company line. And for a lot of people, that's a positive. They like the overall brand, the overall aesthetic, the overall style that that particular company might be putting out. But if you want to try something a little bit different, if you want to break out of that mold, definitely start looking into some of these micro brands. There's a ton of great options out there. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this presentation of the Spinnaker Bradner compressor style dive watch, and I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on micro brands in general. I really do appreciate, again, Spinnaker for sending this watch over, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys, of course, for tuning in. If you'd like to help support the channel and me, there's a number of ways that you can do that. Those ways are always found down in the description of each and every video that I do. Please do follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all my social media accounts. If you'd like to help support me monetarily, I could always use some more help over on my Patreon account. Big thanks to the guys over on Patreon supporting me right now. I appreciate it very much. Finally, if you want to help me out, before you do any shopping on Amazon, click on that Amazon affiliate link I have down below. If you like something that I've reviewed and you want to buy it, or anything else for that matter, if you click on my Amazon affiliate link before you do your shopping, I get a small commission. Those commissions do add up, and a big thanks to the guys that have been using my Amazon affiliate link. I really do appreciate it. Well, that's going to do it for today, guys. So until the next one, I'll close this out and say bye now. <laughs>